Make yourself familiar with the angels and behold them frequently in spirit, for without being seen, they are present with you. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to all of you who are with us virtually. At this time, if anybody has a cell phone or page or anything else that makes noise, if you'd be so kind just to make sure they're in silent or vibrate for the duration of our time today, that would be most appreciated. And for all of you watching virtually, if you too could do the same and just stay present. Um, Steve, of course, knew the value of what we're going to do today, especially, and how it can really help healed hearts and bring people together. So if you could just try to put some distractions aside and stay present, it will be very much appreciated. So as we did last night with the vigil service, we're going to be doing something that um, has been done uh, for generations. It's a series of prayers and words that have been uh, designed to um, give hope to all uh, who were part of any type of prayer service. So let us begin all good things as we do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear friends in Christ, in the name of Jesus and of his church, we gather now to pray for Stephen that God may bring him to everlasting peace and rest. We share the pain of loss, but the promise of eternal life gives us hope. Let us comfort one another with these words from Colossians. You have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. As we spoke the other day, um, we being Angelo, I, and, and Don, and deciding, you know, what was going to be said, I, I thought a lot about the reading I was going to select here for this morning, because it had to be a Steve reading. It had to be appropriate. It had to hit the heart. Uh, it couldn't be too long, because he wouldn't want the focus to be uh, off of where it needed to be. But I think uh, this gospel is appropriate. You do not need to rise. But it's something that most of you have probably heard. But believe it or not, it's not read at as many funerals as you would think, even though the first line is going to make you think, wow, that's the ultimate funeral gospel. It's probably read all the time. It's actually not. But it's uh, the gospel of Matthew 5, and it's commonly called the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this again, except I'm going to do it a little bit differently. The meek are going to inherit the land. If you're hungry, you'll be satisfied. If you're merciful, you'll be shown mercy. If you're clean of heart, you'll see God. If you're a peacemaker, you're a child of God. Done. Steve, as the consummate teacher, and not just to, well, we have Vivian here, myself, so many other funeral service interns. Most of you know he taught French for many years, and he was very proud of that. And... He used to always tell me, DJ, you need sometimes just to go for the simplest, cleanest, straightforward things. So sometimes we let the noise in our lives take over. And death, right? Death can do that. It can make and magnify so much extra noise and nonsense. But what Stephen taught all of us was to get to the heart of the matter to cut through all of that and focus on the really important things. The compassion, the love, the respect, the genuineness, the elegance, the class, all the things that he stood for and tattooed on the hearts of all who knew him. So it's my hope and prayer, and I can think, I can somewhat speak for my mentor today in saying that 
as you think about Stephen Sicarelli and you go back out into the world, don't let the noise take over. Focus on being that compassionate person, that loving person, that caring person, that genuine person. And always make sure you have polished shoes and the perfect outfit on because that class and elegance and when you make eye contact with someone shows that you care about them and that you yourself are coming from the heart which he did in every interaction. Angel. The intercessions for my dear friend, Steve. Dear friends, our Lord comes to rise the dead and comforts us with the solace of his love. Let us praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, creator of earth, to which we all now know it turns. In baptism, you called him to eternal life to praise your Father forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God, you raise the just and clothe them with the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Crucified Lord, you protect the soul of Steve by the power of your cross. And on the day of your coming, you will show mercy to all the faithful departed. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Judge of the living and the dead, at your voice the tombs will open and all the just who sleep in your peace will rise and sing the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. All praise to you, Jesus, our Savior. Death is in your hands and all the living depends on you alone. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Lord, Father, who Lord, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. With the faith and hope we pray to the Father in the words that Jesus has taught us. And we will also say glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And eternal rest run unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him, and may he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Lord, Stephen is now gone from this earthly dwelling and has left behind those who mourn his absence. Grant that as we grieve for our brother, we may hold his memory dear and live in hope of the eternal kingdom where you will bring us together again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Anybody who knew Steve knows that he loved the old hymns. He loved to get into the back of the church and uh, when he uh, could... He was never off. He was always on as the funeral director. But when he could sit down, uh, he would feel these old hymns in his soul, and it was such a enjoyment to watch him sing. Um, I didn't say hear you sing, watch you sing. And then on the way home, he would put on some disco. So it was interesting. But um, this next psalm, um, which has been turned into a song, Psalm 122, uh, it is something that is in the book for us to read, but it's also something that is very important given the state of the world uh, that we're in. And I know uh, Steve wanted nothing but peace for this world. So as we go through today, let us ask for the peace for all people everywhere in the world. So Psalm 122, I rejoice when I heard them say, let us go to the house of the Lord. To the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, according to the decree of Israel, to give thanks for the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Because of my relatives and my friends, I will say peace be within you. 
Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to the house of the Lord. The Lord guards our coming in and our going out. May God be with us today as we make this last journey with our brother Stephen. And as he looks over my shoulder, as he did for so many years, and still will, I can't, he won't go anywhere, trust me. Act justly. Love mercifully. Walk humbly. From the words of Micah and the words of Stephen Siccarelli. Thank you all. Please travel safe. Stephen was a confidant, a mentor, and best friend. He was a source of inspiration, a support in times of need, a friend in happiness and sadness, and most of all, he was family. In dealing with clients and colleagues, he demonstrated unparalleled professionalism and empathy. Steve was a strong and direct person, real, bold, driven, hardworking, and exceedingly honest because he cared. Steve became a repository of wisdom. 
a person who guided with a gentle hand, yet steered with a resolve that was unshaken. Steve, I thank you for helping me become a stronger woman and challenge any obstacles that may come my way with resilience. Your passing has left a gap in my heart that cannot be filled, but your legacy remains in the memories we shared. And for that, I love you. May you rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be always with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Stephen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
My dear brothers and sisters, before we celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life, so as to open an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you might command the name of your servant Stephen to be inscribed in the book of life. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And the first reader, you might come up, please. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit have workers from their toll? I have seen the business that God has given to mortals to be busied by. God has made everything appropriate to its time, but has put the timeless into their hearts so they cannot find out from beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that on our earthly dwelling, a tent should be destroyed. We have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, internal in heaven. We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home, in the body, we are away from the Lord, and we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear from judgment the seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and, I, and prepare a place for you, I will come, at, come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also might be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat a moment. We heard those words of St. Paul in the second reading telling us that we are courageous, we take courage. In Italian, coraggio, it's very similar. To be courageous, these are the moments when we need to be more courageous. And it's like putting the gold in, in the fire like putting our faith to the test. It must be put to the test to see if it's a solid faith that we have. And we can have a solid faith only with Christ. And it's all over the, uh, the scripture telling us not to be afraid, like Jesus Christ telling us in the, in the gospel, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. In other words, he's saying to us, have courage. Don't be afraid. Why? Because there is a time for everything. As we heard in the first reading, there is a time for everything. We heard there is a time for laughing, for hugs, for this, for that. We, we, Ever since we were children, our parents has told us also, wait, it will be your time, you know? Um, 
when you go to a long trip and the child goes and says, are we there yet? Wait, wait, you know. There's a time for everything. And there will be a time of the resurrection. There will be a time when we will see all our family members that they have gone ahead of us, we will see again. There will be a time, Jesus Christ will say, that there will be a time when all the dead will resurrect for eternal life. This is our hope, and that's why Jesus Christ, he says to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Have faith in, in me, he says. If you have faith in God, have faith also in me. He says that there is many dwelling places and that he's going to prepare a place for us. Stephen's place was ready. That's why God called him. Many times we ask ourselves, but he or she was too young. Maybe this was not the time. When, when the time is ready for God, he calls us. Maybe our place is not ready yet. They're still putting either carpet or painting. I don't know what they're doing, but our place is not ready. His place was ready and when, because Jesus Christ says, when that place is ready, then I will come back and take you with me so that where I am, you might be with me also. And we know that God is not cheap. God, if we look around nature, the moon, the stars, the sun, all the creation is fantastic. It's wonderful. Not even the apple can make such a thing. No company can create something like this, like a tree. Only God. And if God is so fantastic and so awesome with the creation, imagine the place that is awaiting for us. Much greater, much better than the mansions in Beverly Hills. Way better. Many years ago, when I'm a missionary, many years ago, when I was a, a, a young seminarian, I was sent to, to some islands called Turks and Caicos Islands. Beautiful place, but the mission there is tough. We spent two days without food. But one of the things that frightened me was going in the boat, small boat, from one island to another. I never learned how, how to swim. So now you can imagine how afraid I was, especially with the, the, the guy who was riding the, um, um, the boat. He was stopping several times. And then he will say, if you look to your right or, or your left, you can see dolphins or sometimes sharks. I was so afraid. To the point that I yelled to the, the guy who was in front and I told him, listen, can you just go straight? Don't stop. And he told me, sir, if I don't stop, the boat can flip over and we all go down. Every time I see two waves hitting each other, I have to stop because it creates like a twist and then the boat go, flips over. Then I told him, okay, do what you have to do. <laughs> I had to obey him. I had to put my trust in him, in my fears. The Lord knows better. He's the one who's riding the boat. The Lord is, is the one who's leading us. Many times we say, but why this, why that? 
because the Lord is taking care of us. Because the Lord doesn't want us to flip over. <laughs> he wants to save us. There was another time when I was so afraid when I was going to be ordained. I can imagine maybe when you were about to get married. So afraid and nervous and I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep. And one of my brothers reminded me that responsorial psalm, one of my brothers sent me a picture and there was two lines of German shepherds. And in the middle was a cat walking between them with the tail up straight like this. And in the bottom he said, even if I walk in the valley of darkness, I will not be afraid. And it made me laugh and the fears went away. It's true, even if we walk in valley of darkness, even if we go through difficult times in our lives, we should not be afraid. Why? Because the Lord is with us. Yes, there is the sorrow. Even Jesus Christ cried when his friend Lazarus passed away, but he was not afraid because he knew that God is with him. His Father was with him. That's why he tells us here, and let us trust in this and Jesus Christ, because he, Thomas, he says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? How can we go? How can we have this trust with God? And Jesus Christ says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. because he's the one who's leading us. This is something that Stephen, he knew very well in his life. That's why God gave him many gifts in his life to the point of touching the hearts of people, many people, because he knew that he was following also Christ in his life. When we follow Christ, we can attract, we can become like magnets, and we attract people to ourselves. Let us trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, and let us place the soul of Stephen in the hands of Christ, our Savior, because He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And let us ask for the Holy Spirit, especially for the family members, because the Holy Spirit is the Consoler of the afflicted. He's the one who consoles us. He's the one who gives us hope. He's the one who strengthens us, our faith. He's the one who guides us. In this Holy Eucharist, Jesus Christ becomes present in this altar because he never, for, he never, never forget his covenant that he died in order to give us life. And in this altar, once again, it's like telling Stephen, I am here, I am with you. I have not forgotten you. Let us pray, please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. We respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Stephen, receive the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Stephen was nourished at the table of our Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families, they have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. 
we pray to the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, the family and friends of Stephen, they seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Stephen. Strengthen our hope so that we might live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Stephen, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of consolation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected in him, it might be your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one choir of exaltation praise as we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And looking up to you, Father, Father, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. When we eat the spread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we serve the 
the, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread through all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to every Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Stephen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in the death like his might also be one with him in the resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep into the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph and Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs of eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you shall enter into my group. But on the same Lord. Lord.
us pray. Please stand. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Stephen, who has journeyed from this world, might by this sacrifice be cleansed and free from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment as we hear the uh, theology. May I come up for the theology? I stand here humbled and honored to pay a tribute that seeks to encapsulate the essence of a person. Stephen was a confidant, a mentor, and best friend. He was a source of inspiration, a support in times of need, a friend in happiness and sadness, and most of all, he was family. I met Steve when I began my apprenticeship. In dealing with clients and colleagues, he demonstrated unparalleled professionalism and empathy. He taught me that at the heart of the funeral industry are human relationships and to nurture these with care and respect. Steve was a strong and direct person, real, bold, driven, hardworking, and exceedingly honest because he cared. Steve became a repository of wisdom, a person who guided with a gentle hand, yet steered with a resolve that was unshaken. Steve, I thank you for helping me become a stronger woman and challenge any obstacles that may come my way with resilience. Your passing has left a gap in my heart that cannot be filled, but your legacy remains in the memories we shared. And for that, I love you. May you rest in peace. Please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Stephen. May our farewell express our affection for him, may it ease our sadness, and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again with the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Stephen in the assuring certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Stephen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. May eternal rest grant unto Stephen the Lord, and let the to light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and console you and gently wipe away the tears from your eyes. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Stephen to his place of rest.